Hi, my name's Michael, and today I want to talk about the story of my purity by Francisco Pacifico. And this was translated from the Italian into English by Stephen Frilly. This novel tells the story of Petrio, and he is determined to become a modern day saint, and he's trying to live his life with purity and do everything right to become saint worthy. Which is interesting because clearly he has never read Confessions by St. Augustine and I haven't read it either but I do know what it's about and I know trying to live your life perfect doesn't really mean that you're going to be a modern day saint. But he's stuck in a sexless marriage and his life isn't going the best. He's working for a Catholic publishing house who is planning to publish a book to try to make some wild claims that Pope Paul II was actually a Jewish Pope. This book is pretty much a satire that looks at sexuality and the Catholic teachings. And this is the kind of book that may be difficult to grasp the satirical nature because you really have to have a bit of an understanding of Catholic teaching to really get the humour behind it. I'm not a Catholic, but I have an interest in theology and I love the way this book deals with that internal struggle with religion. It deals with the religious teachings that he's received and just how much it affects his life. Sexuality in the book is really interesting because he wants to be a pure modern day saint and he went to a priest to ask for help with and guidance with this and the priest told him just don't think about women and that's the way to be pure never think about women which became a little difficult when he got married and even more difficult when he tried to consummate the marriage he had a lot of trouble trying to have sex and not think about his wife or women but this is a bit of a snowball effect for him and he starts obsessing over his sister-in-law's breasts weird spam emails about blondes that will fuck all night will really arouse his curiosity and it just goes from there what i loved about it is the way it deals with this concept of catholic teaching how it's affecting him but it's not actually looking at what the catholics actually say about sexuality when it comes to sexuality and sin people often get a misconception about the teachings of on these topics if you look at the seven deadly sins which is lust greed guilt gluttony and so on these are not actually sins but many people have been taught that they should never be envious they never sh- should feel greed or jealousy however if you look at the teaching it says these are the gateways to sin and we should be wary of these feelings because they can lead to sin they're not actually sin it's not it's okay to be envious it's okay to feel an attraction towards the opposite sex as long as it doesn't lead to anything dangerous or harmful to yourself or other people and if you look at the teachings on sexuality pope john Paul II did a whole lot of lectures about theology of the body, which is actually the Catholic teaching towards sexuality and how we should understand what our bodies are doing and embrace the beauty of sex and the feeling of attraction we gain. So his whole life by dealing with this struggle could have been avoided if he actually decided to be a modern day saint and actually understand the teaching he is trying to strive after instead of going to someone that didn't give him the right advice and that just led him astray. And I enjoyed this book because it dealt with the idea of spiritual teaching and how we're often misinformed or we seek out answers and the people we seek out might not know the right answers but because they're a priest or a religious leader or someone that we think has the the right understanding we tend to follow what we've been told without actually learning for ourselves. I like the way the book actually nudged us to seek out our own understanding of the teachings of the church or in life in general we should be seeking out our own knowledge and critically analyzing what has been taught or said to us and adapting it to our own theology and philosophy in life and spirituality unfortunately the book did go down a direction i didn't like i felt it was too obvious the direction it was going and i didn't quite enjoy that i wanted it to be more of a journey where he 
learn his mistakes instead of continually making more and more mistakes. And it felt just way too predictable. And yeah, in the end, it just went downhill. It started off so strong that I found it really fascinating. But because it went in a direction where he, I won't tell you what happened, but where everything just went where you expect it to go, I didn't enjoy the book in the end. There were some interesting things to learn in the book and really got me thinking about theology. And I'm fascinated about the topic. I'm not sure if many people want to hear about theology and discuss religion, but it is something that I find interesting. And if you are interested in that spiritual struggle, I wouldn't recommend this book. I would recommend The Dark Path instead, which is a memoir about a boy who thought he wanted to be a priest and the struggle he had as a teenager between his attraction to girls and determining whether he wanted to be in relationships with women or to go into the seminary and finally become a Jesuit priest, the most pretentious of all priests. And I think this is a beautiful book, a really fascinating journey. And I love what it says about darkness. In teaching, they always say Jesus is the light and there's always a motif of light being good. But in this, he finds that spiritual connection when he's in the dark, when he's alone and when all the lights are out. And there's a whole idea of just because we're t- taught that light is good doesn't mean darkness is bad. And I really enjoy this book and recommend it to anyone interested in reading about a spiritual journey that deals with that internal struggle, dealing with the modern life and the way we think about religion and that journey within ourselves. So I thought I'd do it this video because it wasn't the best book, but it had some interesting ideas and thought maybe you'd start a discussion on religion that we probably should have. Thank you for watching.